Um, like he said, I'm Eric, and I'm actually in the, de the Department of Art and Art History and the Department of Film and Film Studies. Um, and that's why they're so closely linked up in your mind, because I'm riding two horses while I'm here. Um, one thing I also noticed uh, coming here um, is everyone's amazing titles that actually describe what they do. Um, if you look in um, there, mine just says Harbor. Harbor is the title of the film and essay that I am working on. I am a media artist and a 16 millimeter filmmaker. My current project um, combines the traditions of experimental film and the fields of visual anthropology. Harbor focuses on the ecological connections between the Pacific Northwest and the United Kingdom at the turn of the 19th century. The Vancouver expedition in the 1790s was the third to circumnavigate the world, but it was Captain George Vancouver's second time orbiting the Earth since his initial voyage at the age of 15 accompanying Captain James Cook as quite the desirable internship, I can imagine. <laughs> so it was with um, Captain Cook that Vancouver began his love affair with um, navigation and cartography. And it was because of this love affair that Vancouver was chosen to um, make his 1791 expedition that was charged with charting the northwest coast of what is now British Columbia and Washington State. The maps that Vancouver made at the time were considered the most accurate for over a century. And they were so accurate because they were one of the first to establish fixed points of latitude in the Pacific Northwest. He fixed these points using a chronometer, which was essentially two watches, one that uh, documented the time as he traveled and the other the time in London in Greenwich specifically, and this is the beginning, of course, of Greenwich Mean Time, more or less. But there was another um, technical innovation of the time that accompanied the Vancouver expedition. It was the Wardian case. The Wardian case is a small glass enclosure that creates a tiny ecosystem um, of plant respiration, water evaporation. It is the precursor of the modern terrarium. So sealed from outside air, the case ensures a supply of renewable fresh water. So this allowed for a kind of trade that was previously unimaginable. Once these were placed on boats, like Vancouver's discovery, um, it allowed living plant specimens to be transported across the world's oceans, whereas before we were limited to seed and cone. Just as Vancouver's map was an epistemological tool for coming to know a landscape, the Wardian case is also. It is the simulation of nature in a container by the same logic that a photograph or a diorama is a, sim is a simulation. So, more trees. So, <laughs> David Douglas following in uh, George Vancouver's botanist Archibald Mingus um, brought Douglas fir specimens, seeds, and cones to the highlands of Scotland where um, they were distributed throughout the United Kingdom. This is a Douglas fir growing outside of Inverness. It is currently 217 feet tall and is considered the tallest tree in Europe and even outpaces uh, North American firs for length. It is called Sudotsuga menziesi in honor of uh, George Vancouver's botanist, Archibald Mingus. And so other um, botanists followed suit in this bringing of plants to the United Kingdom from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, the giant sequoia or California redwood was introduced into the United Kingdom in the you know, 1840s, 1853. And this particular specimen is 177 feet tall and is considered the widest tree in Europe. So, um, <laughs> so with the Dean's Grant, also supported by the Hazel Barnes Flat and a Virgil Grillo Memorial Award from the Film Department, I will be visiting the United Kingdom to film these trees, uh, to film antique Wardian cases at Kew Gardens in London, and to look at the manuscripts and letters and documents of different 
botanists and natural explorers. And I will be also going to uh, the Pacific Northwest like next week to um, film a Victorian Heritage Festival, which is a festival of historic recreation of Victorian England. That's it. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Yes. So are the Yeah, I don't think that they're concerned. I mean, it's actually quite kind of like a novelty there and is, um, I mean, the Douglas fir is now in a national park and it, in the highlands is considered kind of a prized element. And the Douglas fir has kind of become part of this, you know, a kind of Scottish identity and it actually, um, became a huge timber production resource in the 1800s. So I don't think they're concerned about it. They've kind of appropriated it in a lot of ways. Um, great. Well, thank you so much.